One of the most often misunderstood aspects of evolution is that it has a purpose, that it makes organisms stronger, faster, more durable across the board. I blame Pokemon. The force of evolution and natural selection has no plan. It is only concerned with one thing, survival. The pathogen I'll be telling you about today goes by the name Neisseria gonorrhea, and it takes this maxim to its limit, and it does so in devious ways. Members of the Neisseria family are colonizers of mucosal membranes. Gonorrhea in particular colonizes membranes of the genitalia, causing the disease known as gonorrhea. Going forward, I'm going to refer to this bacteria simply as gonorrhea, because it's easier to say. Gonorrhea is an obligate human parasite. It generally does not survive outside of the human body. And so this pathogen has become uniquely well adapted to fork your shirt up. When gonorrhea is pathogenic, meaning disease-causing, those afflicted experience painful inflammation of their nether regions. If left untreated, complications from gonorrhea could leave one infertile and in serious pain. Mothers can unknowingly pass on this disease to their babies, putting babies at risk for developing infections, including a potential loss of eyesight. This is a particularly good time early in the video to remind everybody that as of writing the script, the prevalence of STIs are on the rise. Make sure to get tested if you are sexually active. Gonorrhea is treatable. Most resident microbes in the human body are presented with a quote-unquote evolutionary choice. Some microbes have been guided by the hand of evolution to coexist peacefully with host cells. Others, like gonorrhea, evolved to choose violence. And as a neutrophil, a proud member on the front lines of the immune system, it is my sworn duty to protect the body from this menace. I come from a long line of neutrophils that proudly gave their lives in the battle against gonorrhea. A long, long line. That's, that's a really long line. Holy cow, am I gonna have to fight this thing? Maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's review the order of battle, starting from transmission. Gonorrhea is transmitted through sexual contact. Upon arrival to the genital epithelium, gonorrhea will use its pili to find and form attachments with the host cells. The pili then retract, bringing gonorrhea closer to the host cells. Gonorrhea's OPA proteins bind to the host KCAM proteins, triggering a molecular cascade that tricks the host cell into allowing the bacteria inside. Some of the gonorrhea will happily remain inside these cells. Others will exist on the other side and circulate within the body. Still others will leave and grab onto the other side of the epithelium, cluster and ooze out DNA to form a snotty, impenetrable armor known as a biofilm. But not to worry humans, the immune system is on the job. Amongst the first to respond are the circulating effector helper T-cells that coordinate and recruit the big guns of the immune system and… Hey, TH1, TH2, get back to work. What do you mean it's your day off? Who told you that? Don't want to say? Fine. Effector Helper T17, are you going to pick up the slack today? Yeah? You seem unusually gung-ho about this situation. TH17 cells promote and recruit neutrophils to the site of infection. We neutrophils are capable of some pretty sick maneuvers, including the creation of potent antimicrobial peptides and deadly chemical agents including superoxides, hydrogen peroxide, and bleach. Not only that, but we're also capable of capturing and digesting invaders. Pretty cool, right? And while I'm more than confident in my own ability to fight off pathogens, the fact that I'm lacking backup makes me feel somewhat nervous. Because I've got to fight gonorrhea mostly alone? I've got a bad feeling about this. Wait a second! Look at you! What a cute little guy! You can hurt a fly! Well, this'll be easy. Oh, I don't feel so good. <clears throat> this will not be easy. It turns out, gonorrhea may be selectively isolating neutrophils by preventing other immune cells from showing up to sites of infection. Scientists aren't really sure how this happens, but it seems to rely on the OPA protein. Normally, gonorrhea infection reduces Th12 levels by about 20-40% in a mouse model, hindering recruitment of cells like macrophages to the site of infection. But with the OPA protein deleted, gonorrhea infection doesn't reduce the Th12 levels nearly as much, meaning the OPA proteins, the same proteins gonorrhea uses to invade the host epithelium, are somehow also responsible for crippling the immune response. 
Blocking the normal OPA protein with antibodies seems to mimic what happens when OPA is removed, providing some compelling evidence that this OPA protein is in fact jamming immune signaling, but leaving the call for neutrophils untouched. And so neutrophils are drawn to the site of infection where we do serious battle with these invaders. But gonorrhea has some nasty tricks up its sleeve to avoid destruction. To produce the deadly superoxide and hydrogen peroxide, we neutrophils need molecular oxygen as starting material. Gonorrhea is able to suck up that oxygen, hindering our ability to arm ourselves. What little chemical we can make is then neutralized by gonorrhea's production of antioxidants. Not only that, but gonorrhea has robust repair capabilities, meaning they can outsustain our ability to inflict damage. Fortunately for us, we're not a one-trick pony. While gonorrhea can neutralize our potent chemical arsenal, we still have our stash of antimicrobial peptides and compounds. Unfortunately for us though, gonorrhea has an answer for that too. If you've seen my tuberculosis video, you'd know that delivering deadly compounds to internalized bacteria depends on vesicle fusion. Gonorrheal proteins can actually inhibit the fusion of vesicles, preventing us from firing on the invader, whether they are inside of us or out. But in biology, these battles are not often won one-sidedly. If we can get just a couple of deadly agents to this menace, surely we will triumph. We neutrophils make peptides called CAMPs, and they're pretty sick. Get a couple through to gonorrhea and these peptides will bust open their cell membrane. Gonorrhea might be strong, but we're stronger. And I'm sure that Phi 8234, may they rest in peace, would have shared your hopeful, naive sentiment. Because yes, gonorrhea has an answer for that too. Gonorrhea makes efflux pumps, membrane proteins whose job it is to kick stuff out of the cell. MTRCDE pumps out drugs and antimicrobial peptides like CAMPs. Our last option is one that can be rightfully called nuclear. Nets are extracellular traps made from a sticky web of DNA and other antimicrobial compounds that immobilize and kill bacteria. Nets can either be ejected from the neutrophil as a ranged attack or as a self-sacrifice, trapping consumed bacteria within through a process called netosis. Gonorrhea actually encourages neutrophils to create these nets. They don't seem particularly bothered by them. And it has been shown that while reduced in potency, these nets can still kill other commensal bacterial species disrupting the balance of the genital microbiome. With our defense mechanisms neutralized, we neutrophils then go off, slowly dying, acting as unwitting mules, carrying gonorrhea through to other parts of the body, starting the whole cycle over again. If that wasn't humiliating enough, a good chunk of the reason why you feel so bad during a gonorrhea infection is our fault. Gonorrhea makes a membrane protein called LOS, which like OPA is needed to stick to host cells. Over evolutionary time, the immune system learned to up our battle readiness in response to anything making this protein. So when we detect it, we ramp up the inflammation. And rampant inflammation for you is misery and potentially dangerous. It really, really sucks. You might be wondering what the heck the adaptive immune system is doing. Part of why we neutrophils are mostly alone in this fight is that gonorrhea evolved a way to evade the adaptive immune system. We've already seen that gonorrhea inhibits Th2 cells, whose signaling is important for the production of antibodies. But gonorrhea has other ways to stop adaptive immunity too. Antibody production is dependent on the processing of bacterial surface proteins. But within each individual gonorrheal cell, genetic recombination of the LOS sequence is constantly changing its protein structure ever so slightly with enough frequency that it becomes quite difficult to consistently make antibodies against it. This is a process called antigenic variation the all-important OPA protein undergoes phase variation, where occasionally some bacteria will just not make it anymore, hiding a crucial protein that the immune system could track. Without antibodies against these major membrane proteins, the adaptive immune system is neutered. It sounds bleak, and in many ways it really is. Gonorrhea is a master manipulator of the immune system. Luckily for us, scientists have developed potent anti-gonorrheal measures, including the use of antibiotics. But this demon spawn developed the aforementioned efflux pumps to neutralize many of our current antibiotics. We're down to cephalosporins, a class of nifty drugs that prevent bacteria from making their cell walls, making them easy pickings for us. But antibiotic resistance to this drug is lurking around a dark corner. So what can we do? At the time of me writing this script, a vaccine for gonorrhea doesn't exist. While there are some in clinical trials, there's no guarantee that they'll work. 
So until then, if you are active, make sure to use protection and get tested. Your body, your immune system, and more importantly I, as a neutrophil, will thank you.